Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And wow, I tell you, we got another fantastic show coming your way today. We got one of my most favorite people in the world. Uh, just going to come on. Uh, keep in mind, we're still in Black History Month, so we, we got to celebrate Black History Month. But we're going to talk about entrepreneurship. We're going to talk about arts. We're going to talk about artists. We're going to talk about people. This absolutely doctor is, I just like I said, absolute wonderful. But I tell you, you know, before we start this, uh, you know, I tell you, wait, still waiting on the radio station to pop in. They're going to do this thing. We're going to do our thing. Uh, but uh, Dr. Cooler, how you doing today? I'm doing great. You know, yes, one of our favorite people is on the show today, a returning guest. She's been on the show multiple times and she's got so many great things going on for her. And, you know, she's just going to educate us and motivate the audience, not just us, the audience about, you know, Black History Month. And it's not just related to the month. It's just about a lifestyle. So we're really excited to have her back on the show. Aren't you, James? Yeah. So it's, you, know, you mentioned it's, it's uh, Black History Month. And I know it's just uh, one month is calmed out, but uh, Black History should be every day. I mean, because uh, we have uh, sacrificed now uh, forefathers and foremothers, ancestors, everybody has sacrificed so much. Uh, not just for the United States, but for a lot of countries around the world. And uh, I'm just uh, excited to have her back on. And uh, I tell you, she's uh, wonderful. Michelle, why don't you uh, go ahead on and just introduce the title of the show, the purpose of the show, and introduce this great guest, and uh, we'll catch up with the radio station. Oh, most definitely. Well, the title of today's show is Entrepreneurship is an art and every black person is an artist. And we're having a sit down conversation with WOW, founder and executive director of an economic empowerment educational nonprofit organization called Watati Academy, renowned international moxie motivational speaker, author, publisher, entrepreneur, and Gambian goodwill ambassador, Dr. Margaret Derecki. And we're talking about celebrating Black History Month by embracing the entrepreneurial spirit within you and how you can celebrate your Black heritage without embracing entrepreneurship. This month is only a symbol of what we should already know to be doing and be doing every day of our lives. And she's going to discuss successful artists never quit their craft. Rather, they adjust and reinvent themselves as entrepreneurial artists and celebrate Black History Month by pushing and finding ways to engage in the marketplace so you can leverage and build generational wealth, which is very important. So Ambassador Dr. Margaret Derecki, again, she's a distinguished dynamic figure honored with the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award in 2022, recognized as the MLS 2023 All-Style Hometown Hero, selected as one of the Maryland Daily Record Top 100 Women in 2023, and received honorary doctorate in entrepreneurship and business administration in 2022. Again, founder, president, wow, uh, educator, author. She is an acclaimed as an international moxie motivation speaker by the Washington Post and known for her expertise as a how-to and entrepreneurship guru. She has academic honors from Howard University with her BA and Juris Doctor degree in law from American University, Washington College of Law. She's a serial entrepreneur. And my gosh, she's so many more. I don't have the time to tell you everything she is. So please welcome back to the show, Ambassador Dr. Margaret Derecki. How you doing, Della? How you doing? I'm here. I was here cracking up. I was going to say, Sister Michelle, go ahead and keep reading while I go to sleep. <laughs> hey, but Doc, uh, this is what I would like to do. Thank you so um, much, uh, Sister. Uh, you're amazing. I really appreciate that. I was like, stop that already. It's not about me. Go ahead, Dr. Cooley. Thank you what, so much. What I like to do is, uh, you know, I got to hear that radio music. I like to get, get everything locked in at the I same know. time. You know, yeah. so we, uh, we're going to bring the radio station in and uh, I'll tell you what, Todd, let's do it. It's Your Life is sponsored by James J.C. Cooley. 
Life is a series of circles and cycles, phases yeah. and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. James is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the James Cooley Foundation. James is here to equip you to strive for greatness and to overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, James Cooley. Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And we got this absolutely wonderful, wonderful guest on the show today. We're talking Black history. This is Black History Month. Uh, just like I mentioned earlier, Black history should be every day because the contributions of our forefathers, our ancestors, and what we're doing right now uh, is still evidence that, you know, we're making history every day. And we're going to continue to make history every day. But we got to educate our youth and our young adults on the importance of being the best that you can be, giving all that you got. And so we got this absolutely wonderful guest, uh, ambassador, doctor, lawyer. I mean, and so and it, I, you can put so many things uh behind that then we ain't got enough adjectives to uh, just put all that on here so i'll tell you what dr the record welcome back to the show my friend welcome back thank you so much it's always an honor to be with you and uh, your beautiful wife uh, dr michelle you guys are just my favorite kind of people so let's do this so we can embrace others share our experiences and pull everybody up because it's only when we pull each other up that our life become more meaningful Absolutely. So, so, Doc, for the people that haven't seen you on the show today or yesterday or last week or last year and the, the many times that you've been on, can you tell them a little bit about you, where you grew up, yeah. why you're so passionate about the things yeah. that you are doing? Yeah, I don't know. Usually I have a hard time talking about myself, to be honest with you, because <laughs> it's not really about me. And I think in my storytelling or narrative, um, I can infuse a little bit of myself or my background, but you can tell I wasn't born in America. I was born in Nigeria some hundred years ago and came here to go to school, um, trying to pursue the American dream and found out that all that glitters wasn't gold. There's so much more to achieving the American dream and realized very quickly that coming to America is not the American dream or being born in America is not the American dream. That is only what you do with the opportunity. So after I got all those degrees, your wife beautifully kind of espoused a few minutes, a few seconds ago, I quickly realized there was so much more that needed to be done for me to actually realize that American dream. And I didn't like the concept that, or the understanding, the way the society is built, where you can get all the degrees, get everything that you're told to get, and you still struggle financially. You can't build nothing. Even when you work for the job so many years later, you still struggle financially. I was like, heck no, I'm going to find a reason and a way to paint my blackness into building wealth which is the generational wealth and i'm going to shed some light here today so that's pretty much i mean i can talk about myself from here to tomorrow that's not what i want to do basically i want to see how i can use my experience or the pain points of my life to educate and empower others that to be black is not is not is not it's not something we should be surprised. You're black every day. So that's, you know what I mean? I think about it. So the only thing I said, I there was a Mayor Tim Adams of Bowie, who um, is a, my brother from the other mom. I attributed, I think I gave him a tribute on Facebook for the Black History Month. I said, yes, we are uh, every day you are black. No? We are black. But there comes a particular day that the society believes that we need to pay attention to what it means. So for that reason, I honor him. But every day you're a black person, you must celebrate your blackness. You must embrace being black in order for others to respect being black. Oftentimes there's some conversation is going on out there now because I don't do politics. I hate all that rubbish. But somebody's trying to, to insinuate that, you know, if something nasty, something is nasty, then that thing is black. I don't know where they get that from. But you see, but I know all of that. I don't call them politics. I call them wickedness of the heart of certain people. 
And it's because certain people have been allowed to control the economy of the country and others just ask for the little crumbs. So what if we take our blackness and turn it into an economic power by supporting each other, pushing our children as early as elementary school about the importance of building wealth, showing them the way to understand. So for me, my black, my blackness or celebrating black history is actually about talking about how do we gain economic freedom. Once you gain economic freedom, you won't bother with whatever anybody else is talking rubbish there. All this stuff is about money power, right? So that's where my focus is. So for me, black history is a call to, of attention to entrepreneurial spirit that we are. I think in the whole world, I mean, even in the Bible, I don't know who those people were, but my Holy Spirit told me that from time immemorial, if you go down in the annals of history, black people are the original entrepreneurs. But what has held us back is lack of support all right, among ourselves because you can anybody can build wealth. Money never finishes. All you need to do is come up with a great idea and you can build wealth over. That's why people, sometimes when we kind of nickel and dime each other for no reason, I just look at them and laugh because nobody has the power to finish money. You can build wealth ad infinitum, but you just have to know the way to go about it. So as a black person, I'm here to impress, uh, uh, to inspire and impress upon everyone that regardless of your background, regardless of the geographical location where you are, despite whatever life has dealt you, if you're serious about finding your path, we are natural creators. We are very creative more than anything else. No matter where you find a black person in this world, they will never lack. They know how to turn stone into water, right? Like Jesus gave them the power. I'm saying to every one of us here, let's not just talk about celebrating black history with, in, with an empty and next to it. So right, like it's void of what really matters. Can we begin to go down to those who are going to come, the next future generation students or those who are graduating college with no job, start to tell them to be black is to be an entrepreneur. So I'm going to take a break and have you say whatever you got to say, because you know I get passionate about this thing. Like that. So it's an art. How are you going to come and paint yours? Are you going to paint your blackness with, oh, I don't know how to do anything. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, my mommy beat me. My daddy, I got it already. My mom spanked me too, but I said, okay, now I can get up. All right, bro, James. I don't know what you're laughing about. <laughs> you know what, cause uh, that's how it was. That's how discipline, that's how building the foundation, that's instilling things in you. And just like you just mentioned, uh, we anybody can have self-pity and, and start pointing things at everybody else. Uh, but uh, that's not how it is. Uh, you mentioned uh, building wealth. You, you can be aware. But you have to know how to do it. You have to educate yourself. And I'm not saying this has to just be academic. I'm not, I'm not well, education. Education is beyond classroom. That's what our organization does. It's, it's in, like, I don't know if mm -hmm. you can see my shirt. It's creating the narrative. You know what I mean? Changing your narrative, creating your own opportunity. A lot of people think that they're, they're not successful because they don't have money. I can tell you because you cannot minister where you haven't bled. It, if, if it is based on money, I would not have succeeded. You are the asset and not the money. When you create what you have in your hand and go out, somebody will help you. Don't sit in one place and keep saying, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Looking for pity. The world do not give a damn. You know what I'm about to say. <laughs> they, could, they want you to go get up and do it. If you realize that you are the asset, you know, what is so beautiful about being black is that we're so curious. We're so intuitive. You know, if you know how gifted we are as black people. You're not gonna let anybody talk you out of your destiny. And you won't let anybody hold you back. You know, we gotta take a station break. We gotta take a station break, but but I'm getting excited already because you don't hit a couple of things that people need to understand. You know, so I'll tell you, we're gonna take a station break. And if you wanna be part of the conversation, whichever platform that you're watching us on, all you have to do is just go to the comments. And whichever platform, over 55, ask any question that you might have or pick up the phone and call 1-888-344-1170. It's your life. And we'll see you shortly after the break. <music>
really get a chance to know who you are. And once you know who you are, you truly know who you are, love who you are. Love who you are. You're a masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? And everything that you do. I've seen a smile convey I love you. I'm proud of who you are. The one that keeps us close when we're apart. Walking from the darkness of all that we've been through. It seems that there might be a way to leave behind the loneliness we've known and live again life of Dr. James Cooley. Welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. And wow. Uh, that first segment kind of kind of got me on fire because uh, for, at one stage, Michelle, I believe that Ambassador the record store preach didn't even didn't even know that that that, that she was putting on the sermon. I mean, because she's so passionate about <laughs> what she's doing. I mean, you know, you know, I just, so just want to wipe the sweat. No, <laughs> everything that she said was spot on, was spot on. It was awesome. Just like what Jack and Gina are saying, awesome. Uh, we have to understand that. Many times we hold ourselves down because we want to be held down. We want to fight with among each other uh, because we can blame each other. Mm -hmm. And that and you don't have to do anything and say, oh, the reason I can't do it uh, is because of uh, you and this and you want to take from each other. Yeah. Via each other, entrepreneurship is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And the theme of Black history is we're talking about the arts mm -hmm. and we talk about the artistic of every person yeah black person regardless of where you at in the world so you chose a great title doc and uh i'm gonna turn it over to michelle but can can you tell our, our viewers and our listeners why you chose that particular topic yeah who so when um uh dr cooley sent me michelle said okay dr drake what do you want to talk about and i know we were still in black history month and everywhere i looked around there's a lot of noise some are constructive some are not where people are saying um oh happy black history month they don't even know what they're talking about so and i'm like after what does that really mean right so what are we gonna do about it so what is so happy about black history when we're black 365 days a year Right, I get the point of focal focus that a day certain, a month certain, we are trying to get the world to pay attention. Hey, look, I'm black and proud, right? I'm black and proud, kind of thing. But are we doing something more constructive, so that we can wake up and realize that we could do more than just saying we're black? First of all, black people, even in the Bible, 
people like well that means say, i'm not a pre preacher i'm not a pastor so you don't come for me right but mm -hmm. it is it is biblical that we have what it takes is a gift that we have if you look even even like in the museums on so many things that blacks have done around the world even like even even during slavery when they had no means at all right madam jesse worker or marcus garvey think about all those weird they were they they had no freedom at all nothing at all but they were so creative entrepreneurially that they were able to overcome achieve what most of us with freedom today do do not even think is fathomable do not even think that we can do think on it so so that's why people don't understand if they can do what they did against all odds willing to die for it why are we not willing to die literally and figuratively in the sense to build our own so people stop shaming us, people stop making it seem like we're stupid just because we are not behind it because we're stupid. We're behind because sometimes the system can be whatever against certain people. But if we know that, what are we doing as a people to reverse that, right? So I just say to myself, I'm not gonna come here and talk about, oh, wonderful Black History Month and stuff. Let me go where it really hurts, which is in the pocketbook. Yes. Most of us hurt in the pocketbook. Is it because we're stupid? No. Is it because we're not hardworking? No. But the way it is in the what we do, both in MargaretSpeaks.com, which is my motivational speaking platform, and the entrepreneurship economic empowerment platform, is I'm always pushing people to start your own. I don't care how long you work for the government, you work for any corporation, there is a gift that God gave you that he didn't give any other person. And you keep dismissing it because you think, oh, oh I have a job. And I have a little story to tell you that I'm going to shut up. There was a lady, and I'm not going to mention the company she worked for. This girl was brilliant. I, I think from 18 or so, she's not working for this corporation. She's like every store that they need to open, they will get her there to open the store. She makes it happen. So one day I went to this store, one of these mega stores, and I called her name. I said, you know you can be an entrepreneur. For what, you, for what you're putting into these people's life, mm -hmm. company, you don't have to quit. In the olden days, the reason people work for other people is, is a form of an uh, apprenticeship where you learn your learn as much as you can give them your due, then you go open your own. But yeah. they have turned it around now that you're supposed to work until you die or you work there for 40 years. You, they give you a little bit of turkey and a flower and you go home five years later, they die. That's not what the goal is. Do you know what this lady said? She said, she said no, Dr. Durecki, no, no, I'm good with this company. Oh, they can't do it without me. Lo and behold. At one point, her husband got sick and got cancer, this particular person. And guess what happened? The time she needed them the most, they wanted to get rid of her because of the next level of payment they were going to pay her. Do you know the letter go? Think about that. Now she said, I wish I listened to you. So what am I saying? To be black is to be brilliant, is to be creative, to have audacity, even if it's hard. Sometimes, do you know what I hear from my fellow black brothers? They say, oh, entrepreneurship is difficult. So what is not difficult? You're going to walk somewhere else for the rest of your life, be miserably comfortable. As you do that, you still don't have enough money to pay your bills. You can't comfortably go get a vacation and come back and, and be not stressed. That's not what this is about. And, it, and, and one more thing, I'm not saying that people should not work for other people. That's not what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that we can do more as a people because we are natural entrepreneurs and let's not give that up no matter what. And that's how we can be the great Black History Month going forward and beyond. Well said, Dr. Derecki, well said. You know, and you just mentioned about, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit. People are comfortable where they are. It's, have, do you believe in your opinion has gotten to the point and that we don't recognize the entrepreneurial spirit within us because yes, we have gotten comfortable or maybe we're seeing ourselves in a way that is so negative or untrue to who we were truly created to be. What are your thoughts on that? So that's a compounded question, but I, this is what I would say. I have, I'm a keynote speaker to the SBDC uh, Women Brunch this weekend in Charles County and other. The theme they gave me to talk about is called, I am worthy. That's the theme of this convention. And the reason why I brought it up is that 
how could you build something greater than yourself if you don't think you're worthy, right? So you can't give birth to what you're not pregnant with. In other words, you have to believe that you're worthy. You have to believe that you can. You have to be willing to do what others would say, not for me. Biggest finding is that most of the times, our folks, the ones that I know that come to me and shake it, like somebody saw me one day, um, I have written so many books. I'm doing some book signing this weekend. And she came to me, she said, oh my God, just you wrote all these books. I've been trying to write one for 10 years, but it's difficult. Wow. I call that being miserably comfortable. Here's my mindset. I would rather work hard for half of my life, given that nothing was handed to me. Some people do it in 10 years, they're good to go. I can't compare my life to theirs because my papa, my mama didn't give me none of that. And I don't envy nobody. That's their lot in life. Work hard, even if it takes me half of my life on earth to, to establish, then I can be free for the rest of my life. Then be miserably comfortable. They're not really comfortable, but they think they are. One, some of them, one girl one time came to work for us and she had a situation. She saw a situation I was handling with a car. She said, well, I don't want to own my business. It's a lot of work. And that's why some people think we're stupid. We're not stupid. Some of us choose the lazy part. If we articulate and ch challenge ourselves, we can do anything nobody thinks is fathomable in this world. And, you know, and... There are people who, you're right, comfortable in a job or comfortable getting checks from the government, the federal government, where they don't have to put in the work to um, be an entrepreneur or to discover the greatness within them. So I do agree, Black History Month, it, you know, it's nice and it's great, but it, it means more than just celebration of artists or movies or you know inventors etc cetera, etc cetera. it's celebrating the person that has always been in you that you were created not, so, so, so dr cooley right wait so what do you celebrate a lot of times we kind of live a funny life what are you going to celebrate what is not there just because you see this caucus doesn't mean there's anything in it so mm -hmm. what you just said i'm going to you know kind of pick it back on on mm -hmm. the government checks that's another lie from the pit of hell that's another deception so some people i mean let me ask you a question would you rather sign the back of the check or front of the check if you find that you sign the back of the check you're poor yeah you're not building wealth if that makes any sense right so that's what they want you to believe how much money can somebody give you that you can utilize to have disposable income to even live the life that you deserve that god has given us right so so I, and, and is the thing the story we've been told years ago but we're not letting go because our mothers and fathers dealt with that but that's all they had but it's a new day we cannot keep because when you see and be with something that never worked at a point, no matter how good it sounds, you got to get rid of that mindset, find a new way to start. I'm not saying it's easy. I went to hell and back, and I'm here today. So don't go into the, oh, government gave me money. Even if you work your government job because you need some kind of subsistence. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying to give up your job, but what are you doing with the other 16 hours out of your 24 hours? Are you flipping channels, just cracking up on people making money? There was a particular show that I used to be, and it was some kind of sport. I was addicted to it. I'll be running home. One day I just said, what's going on with you, girl? Those people are making money. What you going to kill yourself for? <laughs> and I calculated the hours I put in watching in that sport. I said, oh, my God, never. You don't need to go on. They don't even know who hey, I am. Hey, hold, hold that thumb down. Uh, please. <laughs> oh, one thing. Well, I know we got to take a station break. Hey, Todd, I know you, you locked in. Uh, you probably have to do your last. But you mentioned something that's so important. Would you rather sign the back of a check <laughs> or being the one writing the check? Now, or, or, or the front of it. On the front. Uh, uh, most people, uh, I'm telling you, uh, most of us, I'm being real, would rather sign the back of, of the check. No, I don't. Thank no, God I don't do that anymore. I, I, I wouldn't say all of us because I, you, me and you ain't signing the back, we ain't signing the back of no check. <laughs> we have to work hard, so I tell you what. As you see, Sometimes. I see the numbers are off the chart. We get looking at twenty-five uh, on on YouTube alone. Come on, two thousand something like that. Uh, keep it coming. Keep the comments coming. 
Is that determination? You need to go to the platform that you're watching us on or pick up the phone down 1 888 344 It's your life, and we'll be back with more of the ambassadors shortly after the break. <laughs> There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome adversity. Coming up on It's Your Life with James Cooley. States of America and I am here to just say first of all I'm so happy and honored to be on it to be in the Coffee Book 2023 Unified Brain Z and other organizations thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to uh, be a part of this collection you're taking is a dead end what if love leaves you all jaded and broken what if that limb breaks your climbing out on yeah what if it all goes wrong I played that song because a lot of times we get on roads and dead ends and and we just want to give up and want to throw our hands up in there. That's my good friend, uh, Amy Scruggs. Uh, um, she was on the show the other day. I've been, we've been knowing her for a long time. I love her song. We could be on a path and we can pity ourselves. We can do all of these things. We can fall down, uh, get back up, fall down, get back up till we get it right what you had just said right here we have the entrepreneur spirit and all of us have it's just do you want to explode it do you want to be self-made do you want to build up do you want to leave a legacy do you want to learn uh through trials and tribulation we get it right i mean sooner or later we're gonna get it right you're gonna step out there and it's gonna go right and that's the beginning of confidence, courage, hope, belief, most importantly, faith. And so that's why I'm so excited about uh, entrepreneurship uh, in the arts. And every black person is an artist. I mean, you create your own program. So, Doc, I want you to pick it back up from there <laughs> and, 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 and do it again. You know, first of all, thank you guys so much, Dr. Dr. The Coolies. All right, you guys are the baddest folks around, and I love you all, right? <laughs> so I don't want people to misunderstand what we're saying here. We're not saying that it's easy, because if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. That's not what we're saying. 
we're just saying that if you want it bad enough, regardless of what your second son was, is that's why on my Margaret talk show, soon to start on all my Margaret speaks that come platform my tagline is rewrite tomorrow how do you rewrite tomorrow what does that even mean that means that whatever the past had been whatever adversity you had encountered whatever failing disappointment you're looking at somebody who is who's been disappointed by everything and everyone on earth who has been rejected by everyone on earth but i found my fuel from those rejections and disappointments don't get, don't get discouraged when others say no to you. When people come for you, you say, hey, thank you for motivating me. If it wasn't for the wicked people on earth, I wouldn't be here today. I get motivated by the people that come against me that should have been the one to propel me. We're not saying that you should, we're not, we're not dismissing the things you've been through. We're not dismissing that you, you know, you never went through any challenges. That's not what we're saying. And we're not approving that the parents should spank their kids. Or not. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying that if you understand that challenges and, and disappointment, things can happen in places, in your family place of work, or because even the Bible said that, all things will come together for good for those that believe. I'm telling you that don't sit on the thing that didn't work out for you. That's what you went through. It's an experience. That's not who you are. Just because you went through something is not a period. It's only a common your journey. You need to pick up. No matter how tempting that parking space is, don't park, including painting your life with the gift God is giving you. That in due season, it could become a thing. And you don't need to quit your job to start a business. What is in your palm? What is in your hand? Oh, by the way, oh, it came to me. It cannot be a good idea. Heck no. Tell the devil to get it behind you. Just because it came to you. Because that's what people do. Until you see it on TV, you say, oh my God, I thought about that five years ago. But I didn't think it was a good idea. That's not what you want to do. <laughs> so we're saying this is your opportunity to begin to rewrite your tomorrow. Whatever happened before is irrelevant. Yesterday mm -hmm. is gone. Shakespeare said there's no need to cry over spilt milk. What is done is done. This is there is a new day, right? Today is a new day. Don't feel sorry for yourself. And it's not how far it's well, how well. Start today, start something. Because the only way you build generational wealth, and a lot of people say, Well, I'm making enough money right now. I don't care. Is we're not talking about you. What are you gonna leave the world with? How are you gonna change the world? Who are you going to bless? Somebody said to me, all my kids are graduated from college. I don't have any problem. I said, selfish, you shame on you. We're not talking because what you do for your family is your obligation. We're talking about what are you going to do for the world? So when you go over there, prayerfully, you're going to heaven. God will say, welcome. I don't know where you're going, but you need to figure out how and where you're going to show up. <laughs> but that's the truth. So we say, <laughs> just go, go ahead, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Hey, hold on. Hey, 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 hold on. Hey, hey, Doc. Yeah. You are absolutely right because a lot of people get caught up on to today's success for them, right? Yeah. And your kids, oh, yeah, my kids graduated. I mean, they, my kids didn't. Well, it ain't about you and your kids. Yeah. It's, it's about what are you going to do yeah. for others? Yeah. What are you going to do for your grandkids, your, uh, your, your great and all that? Mm -hmm. What type of legacy are you gonna leave? What what do you want to be remembered for? Yeah. Other than well, uh, uh, my, uh, my, 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 me, 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 me myself me, and I, I, me, I, myself I, I, and I. I, I, I. And you know, they never find happiness. If you're stuck on yourself, you're miserable. Honestly, you know that? The only joy, and I found this out. You know, I've been, I've been in, I was in the gutter for 20 some years, y'all. I could I didn't I couldn't even put any foundation on my wooden stick. Get it, I can put no powders. But I didn't care. I kept climbing out. I kept, I believed in myself. Are you worthy of what you're desiring out of life? Do you think because you're black, nobody will buy your product? Somebody told me when I wrote my book, How to Succeed Against All, they're like, Well, you're not Oprah Winfrey. Nobody's going to buy your book. I say, Thank you for blessing me. I'm like, How do I form my own business, uh, my own uh, publishing company? That's how in 2000 I founded jazz publishing today i publish other authors i get my residual income i've written more than 20 books so if you challenge me say because i'm black and somebody say oh you have an accent you want to be a motivation to so i say thank you for blessing me i thought about think and think and grow rich that 
with the moment where those people came back and they found a Spanish community that somebody said, well, are you crazy? Spanish people, they won't talk to you. They don't even talk to people. That, and the person said, oh, now I get it. They are too clannish. That means if I get one, I get all of them. So that came to my remember. I said, that's wonderful. That means when I speak, people remember me because the world sound. I saw that as an asset and not a disadvantage. Who out there is thinking that the thing people said was going to be the curse in your life could be your blessing? Think about Jabez, whose mother called him pain, who knew what? And he said, heck no. God bless me indeed and expand my territory. Who am I speaking to right now? So that's exactly what you need to do. Whatever is negative in your life is a place where you need to find your destiny. And that's what you need to do. That's what black people know how to do. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, Dr. Tarecki, you know, entrepreneurial spirit within the black, you know, within the black, within the black community, you know, it's always important to network and collaborate, you know, within the black business community to contribute to entrepreneurial success. Do mm -hmm. you believe that more work needs to be done? And if it does, what are your recommendations? I'm glad you said that. Um, but I'm actually, I've been getting a lot of requests to write a book about that because I literally use my mind. I wasn't born with nothing in that regard, except the Holy Spirit that I used when I realized there was nobody's going to give me a chance. They think about it, right? You mm -hmm. sound differently than I do. I love who I am. I make no apologies. Some people will open door for you before they do for me, but it doesn't bother me because God gave birth to me where he needed me to be birthed, right? So I realized that I needed to make it a point of duty, that I needed to go where I have no business to go. I needed to talk to people I have no business talking to. I didn't care who laughed at me as long as I'm moving towards my target, really, right? My mother taught us that, that it doesn't matter who's laughing at you as long as you're progressing and they're helping you. They can laugh and, or, or, and you just go straight to the bank. So network marketing is something that it's become like almost like a curse word right now. Maybe a word network, I ain't doing that. Because people have um, kind of underutilized it and over talked about it. But network marketing, I call it relationship marketing. Because if you know how to network market, the people you need are in that room. But oftentimes, a lot of people don't know how to do it. I call them network business collectors, right? Business card collectors. They go in, they talk to people, they take the business card and they go home, right? They don't know how to do it. We just came from an event. I think Rose was, Rose, I just let this comment. She was at the event. I just met her at the MGM with the m and and NBC program that we were there at this reception. From that event, I've already turned a good number of it into business. So the problem is not with the networking itself. What do you do? Some people are so afraid that they can't, they're afraid of what the person is going to say. But more importantly, they come unprepared. So when the person asks them, what do they do there? Um, oh, you know, um, ooh, uh, ooh, right? They're like, get out of my face, right? <laughs> so network marketing is important. You got to start somewhere. Do your homework. No thing this big was ever started big. In the class yesterday, when we're talking to elementary school students, when I told them that Walt Disney was once nothing, they're like, what? I told them Walmart was nothing. It was they said it was smaller. They said, really? Because the system do not share with this youth the processes, the strata. They show them the bling bling and they and everybody feel like they're you the show on the bling bling. Hey, we have to take a statement break. But you you're absolutely right. We have to start something and build upon that because you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you can do it. You have to have vision, understanding, purpose. If you can see it here, you can do it. And that's what the direction. And that's the direction. Uh, 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 it's, it's going to be So we're going to do this. Take a station break. We're going to come back. But we got some more. And, and the side, we said, we got some more. Coming your way. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome adversity coming up on It's Your Life with James Cooley. The J.C. Cooley Foundation is a nonprofit organization that was started in October. Of really get a chance to know who you are. And once you know who you are, you truly know who you are. Love who you are. Love who you are. 
your masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? And everything that you do. If you can see it here, you can do it. You might not be able to see it with the physical eyes, but if you can see it here, you can do it. Don't let anyone tell you that tell you that you cannot do it. You all are the future leaders of tomorrow. I, I am a leader. I am a senior. I will be one of the leaders of this world. So if you know yourself and if you love yourself, you got the confidence, you can share yourself, you can be who you are. It doesn't matter if you short, tall, fat, big, whatever, black, white, pink, gold, purple. It doesn't matter. You step up with confidence. You are a masterpiece. You are leaders. A stands for attitude, commitment, and enthusiasm. Let's talk about the A, attitude. A lot of times we are confronted with things or in situations and we often react because we're not, for one thing, walking around with the right attitude where we get an opportunity to think. Attitude will make or break you. Most of the time, the first thing, depending on where you're at with your attitude, you wanna react, you wanna hit, you wanna say something. You want to do the first thing that come to your mind. We all have this split second, this split second where we can think about it. Somebody bump into you or say something, we can think about it. I need to dream big, think big, and be big. Be big is not in statue. It's in heart and it's in mind. You don't always have to react when you're confronted with a negative situation. Let me talk about. I thought there was an important place. Um, yeah, I loved it. Attitude, commitment, and enthusiasm. Totally. In order for us to be successful. Yeah. Uh, at anything. Was it black, white, pink, gold, or purple? Uh -huh. You got to have the right attitude. Uh -huh. And attitude, what I mean by that, and what we're talking about today, right mindset. And we have to want to. We have to want to. Because you can't do unless you want to. You can't do anything unless you want to. Now, we are not always born with knowing exactly what our purpose is right away. Yeah. <laughs> but we, through trials and tribulations, through experiences, and just like you were saying, uh, mommy and daddy, I mean, uh, sent you over here to go to school and this and that. You probably had no idea uh, that you was going to turn out to be a lawyer, a doctor, a publisher, an author, a mama, or, I mean, and Papa. like, man. Papa, mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to help you add more, right? <laughs> uh -oh. oh, yeah. So I want to pick it up with that with attitude, uh, Doc. Uh, how important do you see being success or bringing success to anyone if they're not focused on the right attitude and, and not just about them, but about others? Yeah. And not worrying about how people see you and what they're going to say to you. Can yeah. You talk about that? Yeah. First of all, um, entrepreneurship is an attitude. Um, it is an attitude. It's something you have to decide. And it's also a decision you have to make. Success is equally a decision. But um, a lot of people are stuck on what they're going to say. 
what they're going to say about me, what they're going to say, you know, all that stuff. You don't, they don't even pay your bills. The people you're afraid of are also afraid of, of you and afraid of themselves. So don't even worry about that. There was a quote. This is not, I'm not the author of this quote that says that, but I've had my own variation of it. To be independent of public opinion is a very first condition to achieving anything great. That kind of relieved me years when I was trying to figure myself out. I'm going to do this. And almost everybody around me is sounding and smelling the same way. And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want this. I don't want it. When I hear, no, I don't want it. Because to know what you don't want is the closest way to know what you want, period. If you want to know or where you want to be, just that was what happened. To be independent of public opinion is the very first condition to achieve anything great. That is so freeing. If you can remove your mind, and you know what is so strikingly shocking about this? This, oh my God, they're looking at me, they're laughing at me. It goes all the way to adulthood. I did not know that it's actually a pandemic for older people to still be worried and concerned about what others are saying about them. At the end of the day, when that door closes, you yourself and your God. So for me, attitude is everything. As a matter of fact, the 29th, this Thursday, I'm going to be the closing keynote speaker for Black History Month at University of Maryland College Park. And my topic is going to be similar, but I'm going to be talking to some staff members and students. So we're going to close it down with creating that mindset of entrepreneurs as people. And stop saying something is hard, definitely not going to do it. What is not hard? They're like, well, I'm just going to get a job. I said, guess what? Whoever you're going to go work for, if they pay you $50 an hour, you can be guaranteed that they're making $250 on you or more. Nobody's going to pay you more than what you produce or what they can get out of it. They, you, they're going to be they're going to be able to leverage you. And I'm not against that because I have employees and things like that. That's not what I'm saying. But I hire entrepreneurial employees there because there are different types of employees. So I'm going to be there to have this conversation with this student because I remember 2018, I was there. Um, I was there, um, the Black Commencement graduation speaker. When I got down, some of the students came, some of them were crying. I'm like, because I've been running my mouth, y'all. So I'm like, what did I say now? And they were like, Dr. Dureke, we wish we met you four years ago. That For as long as I live, I will never forget. And I said, why? They said, had, you, had I heard you, I'd have chosen a different path. And you know what is even scary now? This AI and chat GPT, JTTT, all that stuff, is going to take a lot of minority jobs is already doing that but most of us are still asleep at the wheel not knowing that it's time for us to begin to create our own so we can change that narrative begin to build that start small rome wasn't built in a day it took me some donkey years to be here but i wasn't trying to compete with anybody i was focused what i was doing was not popular i didn't care what was popular that's exactly what you need to do keep the right attitude even when it's difficult right? It's going to be a hard journey, but it doesn't matter. Do, do, what If you really want it, it would be hard because it's the decisions you made. During my journeys in my lifetime, when I get discouraged or something is happening that I didn't think is going to go that way, I just go, oh my God, I'm like, Marcus, shut up already. <laughs> oh my God. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, mm -mm. I don't let myself, because that's what the devil wants you to do. And, and, and you cannot, you cannot let yourself get a negative. Not at all. Hey, but doc, we're down to last, uh, Two oh minutes. my God! It's almost four Love already. That's crazy. Uh, we we down to the last couple minutes. Or so, but uh, can you uh, give us uh, a minute or less some takeaways yeah. on what our viewers yeah. and our listeners yeah. should have gotten from this show? I know yeah. I talk to you all the time. I mean, I, every time I talk to you, I get yeah. more and more and more, okay. and you. You're absolutely fantastic. But before way. I go, I just give a, do my little thing here. Is, um, if you, anybody wants to check me, I can go to MargaretSpeaks.com. That's my um, my speaking platform. If you're looking for speakers or what have you. And on social media, um, you can find me on TikTok on um, the Margaret Dureke. Um, You can send an email, Margaret at MargaretSpeaks.com. But here's my... Um, um, I, said, I don't do um, I don't like people that um, um, because I was trying to think and talk at the same time. Hey, okay. So what is my biggest takeaway is for you to kind of pull back, take a deep breath and exhale. Don't feel overwhelmed by what you heard today. Don't get discouraged no matter where you are. Take a deep breath and say, okay, James, John, whatever your Mary, whatever your name is, I think I need to sit back and reevaluate my life. Is anything true? Did anything I hear today ring a bell somehow? Or am I going to dismiss it, thinking tomorrow is going to be better without any change? You have to make some hard decisions. Don't you think it's ever too late 
is never too late. If you know you've heard that voice and that song and nobody cares about hearing it and you know it's time for you to give birth to it, start small, give yourself some time. Don't be in a hurry to build wealth, especially if your papa is none of those people. I'm, I don't care to call their names right now. And mm -hmm. I don't want those people because I love the fact that I built this. The, my power comes from the ability to create and do. So take heart and believe that you have the power to rewrite your tomorrow. Wow. I love it. <laughs> You know, doc, Doctor Sorecki, you know uh, that uh, you got a platform on my show any day. Uh, what the audience don't know is you can ready to start your own show real right. soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and uh, if, if you think you just witness motivation, dedication, creation, enthusiasm, just wait till she's start her own and, and and you're gonna be able to get this on a regular basis so i want to thank you so much so thank much you. so much uh for taking the time to come on the show thank you guys yeah. for having me I, I wouldn't i wouldn't have it any other way appreciate you <laughs> and i love you both you know we love you i gotta thank uh dr coolio here uh for putting together another An amazing family. show yeah. uh, <laughs> i gotta thank todd todd i know you can hear me uh, are you there, Todd? I'd like to thank Todd and KCBQ AM 1170 FM 96.1. Uh, we are uh, in prime time every Sunday uh, at beginning at 11, uh, 11 a.m. Uh, um, Fifth Standard Time. But most importantly, i like to thank our viewers and our listeners for tuning in to the James Cooley Show. It's your wife. As always, I tell you, always dream big, think big, and be big at everything you do. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. It's your life, and we'll see you then.